334 episodes across 25 seasons of television. With more to come, that's how long the Walking Dead franchise is. Starting with the original Walking Dead show in 2010, this originally small-minded franchise became something much larger than itself. It follows the story of Rick Grimes, a driven man who will do anything for his family's safety. His journey constantly brings in themes of moral ambiguity, character anxiety, and awesomeness that are unmatched in almost any other TV show. Over 15 years, we've seen Andrew Lincoln act his heart out in every single episode of the show that he's been in. He's a phenomenal actor who became the center of cable TV for over a decade because of this show. But this video essay isn't just about The Walking Dead. It's about the fans. After Rick Grimes' disappearance in Season 9, Episode 5 of The Walking Dead, fans constantly wanted him to return to his family and give him the closure he'd been looking for for years. Finally, over four years after his disappearance, it was announced that he would get a spin-off show where he would lead as the main character with his other half, Michonne. This quickly became one of the most anticipated shows of 2024. The reason? the insanely long wait for Andrew Lincoln to finally return as Rick Grimes. So here's the question, did The Ones Who Live deliver in not just being a well-written show, but also satisfying fans that have been waiting for this buildup for over 15 years? To actually justify this video essay, it's really necessary to talk about what this show actually is. It's not just an action or horror show, it's a love story. It's a love story between two characters that will do absolutely anything in their own mind and justification to not find, but protect one another. For Rick, that's making any sacrifice he must to keep the love of his life safe. For Michonne, it's nearly the same but the opposite. She'll do anything to find Rick, even if that means possibly losing herself in the process. Rick and Michonne's on-screen aura begins the moment that Michonne is introduced into the original cast in early season 3. Since then, both of these characters have experienced all sorts of different experiences that bring them closer, including the most notable, which is Rick Grimes losing his son. To truly appreciate the beauty of the ones who live, you're required to immerse yourself in the perspective of these two characters and want them to find each other at any cost. I think The Ones Who Live starts this off brilliantly by not wasting any time with Rick and Michonne finding each other. One of the most well-written parts of this love story is the fact that they find each other within the first two episodes, and the rest are dedicated to them getting home. To make matters even better, the first two episodes are more than enough time to genuinely show how badly Rick and Michonne want to find each other, with Rick trying to escape the CRM four times and even chopping off his own arm in the process. His struggle is furthered by the fact that he nearly ends his own life because he truly believes he'll never see his family again. This is something to really think about. The man who has been fighting for years in the apocalypse. The man who watched his wife die. The man who had to kill his own best friend to protect his family. The man that lost multiple of his best friends over the years and blamed himself for not being able to protect them. The man that eventually lost his own son kept going and he finally gave up. These two episodes showed me that no matter the man, no matter the material, everybody has a breaking point, and Rick Grimes has reached his. This leads me to the next reason why I believe this show does a good job of concluding Rick Grimes' character, and that is struggle. The Walking Dead has always been about struggle, from the very beginning, when the struggle was purely walkers to the seasons after. The struggle shifted from the initial grief of losing the world and fighting walkers, to the struggle of dealing with other humans and the continued grief of losing their loved ones. Some struggle always remained and some capacity, and that thrill is what made The Walking Dead so intense in the first place. While I can't deny that this franchise's struggle peaked in Season 7 with the intro of Negan, I have to admit that the way this struggle was handled in the show was really well done. Breaking down your most powerful character in a franchise and showing that even he can be destroyed is dangerous. It sets the tone for the rest of the universe, and if poorly done, it'll destroy years of character development. But the way it was handled in The Ones Who Live was so good. Andrew Lincoln's portrayal of Rick Grimes was felt through millions of screens. The the fact that the fans could empathize with his struggle on some level is what made the show successful. Michonne's struggle to find Rick was amazing too, and while slightly rushed and oddly paced, showing Michonne's one year plus journey to find Rick was handled really well. Even surviving through the CRM killing most of her friends on the journey, she never gave up and eventually found him. This does bring me to the other half of the coin though, which is the consequences. While I did love this show, one of my biggest gripes with it is the lack of consequences. That doesn't mean there weren't any. As previously mentioned, the first two episodes really did an incredible job of showing the consequences of both Rick and Michonne's actions. But I have to say, the final episode really lost the plot regarding the specific topic. I do believe that certain things that happened in the finale of this show were fully fueled by plot armor and a lack of consequence, but at the end of the day, the scale on which greatness of the show is being rated isn't just objectively how well written it is, but primarily if the show has a satisfactory send-off of Rick Grimes' character. The real question here is should we be willing to look through some of the plot holes in writing convenience to acknowledge the overarching point, which is that Rick Grimes finally got his happy ending, he finally found his family, and I believe the answer is yes.
With all of that being said, there are certain shortcomings of this show, and I don't just mean this figuratively. After watching the show twice start to finish, I have to say, the ending was still rushed. A lot of logic went out the window in the final two episodes of the show. The focus point turned from, can they survive, to, what's the coolest way to get these two home? The biggest failure of the ones who live was the CRM, and in my opinion, the show failed the years of suspense that the world beyond and the helicopters from The Walking Dead and Fear created. The CRM was not nearly the powerhouse it should have been, and I fully stand by the fact that the last episode's writing was pushed out like a baby coming two weeks early. The main point here is that the show could have easily been two episodes longer, giving us a satisfying conclusion to the CRM. There had to have been a larger reason that Jadis and Thorin would give up everything and devote their life to a 500-year plan that the CRM has been hinting towards. Instead, the Echelon briefing was just, we are bad guys and we need to kill everyone. The entire CRM plot was just to justify the main characters becoming morally good in killing everyone and destroying the frontliners. And along with the poorly handled CRM focus, another thing that really bothered me is the way side characters were just killed off. And honestly, this isn't even a problem in this show. This has been an overarching problem in the Walking Dead franchise for a while now. Once a side character in the Walking Dead has served their purpose, or the showrunners don't know what to do with that character, they just kill them off, and it's really frustrating. It inadvertently makes the main characters seem like they can never die, and it makes the side characters feel a lot less real. I'm really tired of every character besides the main character just dies. It's not a unique trope, it's not funny, and it's not entertaining. It's what we saw in seasons 10 and 11 of The Walking Dead with the Reapers and the Commonwealth arc, and it's what we saw in the three spin-off shows that have come out so far. Characters like Nat and Okafor should have lived longer than they did. I understand not wanting to kill off your moneymaker characters, but the way they handle these plot-armored characters is really annoying sometimes. Speaking of these two side characters though, the ones who live did do a relatively better job with their side characters than most of the shows in the franchise. Often, we see characters left behind with their writing, or they're just really annoying. We saw this issue with Daryl spinoff with many characters hating Laurent, and one character really stands out to me in the show, and that's Jadis. Even though Jadis took on an antagonistic role in this show, her character development was incredibly well handled. Her absolute commitment to the CRM until the very end and the way she died was all really well done. Her arc with Gabriel was also great, although it did bother me that Gabriel never told anyone about the fact that he had a contact who had a surplus of resources while Alexandria was basically starving. In my opinion, the only big flaw with Jadis's character is not her flaw at all, but a flaw of the writing of the CRM. Going back to my earlier gripe with the writing of the CRM, she puts her whole heart into the 500 year plan and echelon briefing, and all of this is thrown away the moment Sergeant Beale tells Rick that the plan is just to kill a bunch of people. Now, while I said a lot of negative things about the last two episodes of the show, I cannot deny that the last episode's action was really awesome. And I could tell that they wanted to make Rick Grimes feel like the same character that he was in the past, so they did a lot of cool things with them. Overall, I really enjoyed this series as a standalone series, and I don't think it needs to be continued for a season two. I would love to see Rick Grimes come back into the world more than anyone else, but I really don't think it's necessary from an objective perspective. With that being said, when I'm critically rating the series, I would give it a 7.5 to 8 out of 10, which I think is a pretty fair rating once I can get past all the nostalgia and the real reason that I'm so obsessed with the show in the first place. The Walking Dead franchise is one of my favorite franchises in the entire world. In fact, the main show is my third favorite show of all time. Aside with my minor issues with the CRM, I think the show does a good job of delivering good quality and actually is a much better written than a lot of other shows in the Walking Dead universe. I would also like to give an honorable mention to Denai for writing episode 4 the way she did. People may disagree with me on this, but I actually believe that episode 4 was the best episode in the show. I thought the disconnect between Rick and Michonne was beautiful, and the way they had to find each other throughout the episode was amazing. More than anything though, I think what was so important is it finally feels like we as the fans and Rick as the character was given the closure that he needed after losing Carl. After the poorly written season 8, I feel like we never really got closure for Carl's death. It felt like everyone was already distracted with the savior war, and no one really acknowledged his death for what it was. We didn't really get closure for these two characters until just now, and it finally feels like Carl can live on as a memory. 